okay, here's the next study guide. Um, so, in the last one, we talked a lot about finding the lengths of segments on a coordinate plane, and I don't want to overdo it. So basically, for this one, when you need the area of the circle, you'd get the radius, and you'd make a triangle that's two by three. You'd use the Pythagorean theorem and plug it into the formula. And then the perimeter is exactly like the one on the other study guide. So if you want to hear how that's done, just rewatch, uh, just rewatch that video to do one and two. The only thing that I think I would like to talk about on this one that's going to be useful for the test is how to find the height of this triangle right here. So to get the height of this triangle right here, um, I would try using this as the base. But if this is the base, that means this would have to be the height. And remember, if this is the height, this has to be a 90 degree angle. So if this is a 90, we could use these two lengths. But in order for that to be a 90, the slopes would have to have um, that relationship that we've talked about. So the slope of BC is one up and five over. So I know that if the slope of BD is negative five, then I know I can use it. So let's look here. This would be down five and one over. So since it is, I could use this as the base and this as the height. Another way to look at this problem was if I was using this as the base, that means I would have to use <clears throat> maybe this, if it was 90 degrees, as the height too. So I'd check the slopes of this, and then whatever line connects these two, and if they were perpendicular, I could use that too. Okay, let's take it down. So again, we're skipping one and two, because I feel like I already did that so much on the other video, and I think that you guys really got it by now. Uh, using the graph at right, justify that the quadrilateral ABC is a rhombus. So a rhombus is a shape where AB would have to equal BC, and it would have to equal CD, and it would have to equal AD. So let's get these different lengths. So AB is two, one, two, three, four, a two by four. This is a two by four. This is a two by four. And this is a two by four. So I could have you guys go two squared plus four squared equals C squared four different times. But that right there shows me that you know what you're talking about and that you only need to figure it out once. So two squared plus four squared is C squared. So, Basically, all of these distances are going to be the square root of 20. And these triangles show me. Now, if one of them had been different, I would have to go back and rework it. But since it's not, uh, that is good enough for number three. Okay, turn it over for problem number four. I think this is probably, there's so much of it on the test, um, it's important that we go over these really carefully. So here we're given that f of x is equal to 4x minus 6, and that g of x is equal to negative 4x plus 22. We need to write g of x as a translation of f of x. So we need to write g of x, but not like this. So we need to make it, we need to make g of x as a translation of f of x. So g of x equals f of x. So g of x equals f of x, but then we need to change it so it's equal to g of x. So if g of x equals f of x, it would mean that g of x is negative 4x minus 6. But it's not. g of x is negative 4x plus 22. So nothing needs to happen for the negative 4x. That's the same. But how would we get ourselves from negative 6 all the way up to 22? And as I circulated, I noticed most of you guys got this right. We would need to add... 28 to it um, to f of x to have it be the same as g of x.
Number five, on a graph, the equation a of x equals b of x plus 14 would mean that b of x is a shift up 14 units from a of x. So b of x is 14 up from a of x. Give me just a second here. Um, I just want to double check this. That actually, as I suspected, is not correct because if B of X is a shift up 14 units from A of X, then it would be written the other way around. So that one is not an answer. But B of X is a shift down 14 units from A of X would mean that B of X is 14 down from A of X because A of X is B of X and 14 more. So that would be true that b of x is 14 down from a of x because in order to come up equal to a of x, we'd have to add 14. So that one is b. Number six, if h of x equals p of x plus 9 and p of x is 3x minus 18, then h of x is one of these things. So h of x would have to equal p of x, which is 3x minus 18, plus 9. So h of x is equal to 3x. And then combine those two for minus 9. So that one is a. 17. If f of x equals g of x minus 13, and f of x is negative 3x minus 19, then g of x is what? Ooh. OK. So basically with this one, um, f of x is this. So I would need to take what f of x is and put it here for f of x and then solve for g of x. So f of x is negative 3x minus 19. And I know that f of x equals g of x take away 13. So now I need to treat this like a variable and solve it for g of x. So I would add 13 to both sides. And I would have negative 3x and negative 19 plus 13 is negative 6. So I would get, uh, it's written kind of backwards, but that's okay. g of x is equal to negative 3x minus 6, which is choice C. Number 8, if f of x is g of x minus 15, and g of x is this, then f of 2 is what? So I would go f of x is equal to 4 times 3, to the x, so I'm taking what g of x is and putting it right here, minus 15. So now they want to know f of 2. So f of 2, all that means is you have to plug in 2 to this. So we would have um, f of 2 would be 3 squared, which is 9. So we would have 4 times 9 minus 15. And then we would have 36 minus 15. And we would finally know that f of 2 is equal to 21. Okay, moving to the back. Uh, let's make a new video starting with this problem right here.